day everyone! Today, I'll be talking another very important skill in science and this is measuring. Measuring as a basic science skill. Measuring is the process of associating numbers with physical quantities and phenomena. It is a technique in which properties of an object are determined by comparing them to a standard. It comes from the Greek word metron, meaning limited proportion. In measuring, metric system is used. The base unit for measuring length is meter, symbol M. And the instruments used in measuring length are tape measure, meter stick, and a ruler. The base unit for measuring mass is kilogram. And the instruments used are triple beam balance and electronic balance. Another base unit of metric system is seconds. And seconds is the base unit of measuring time. An instrument used is a clock. Another base unit of metric system is degree Celsius, which is the base unit of measuring temperature. Instrument used is a thermometer. Here is an example of a liquid thermometer. Another infrared thermometer. A liquid thermometer is a glass tube filled with mercury. The liquid which is silver in color and the standard temperature scale is marked on the tube from 0 to 360 degrees Celsius. Temperature works with the principle of thermal expansion. With changes in temperature, the mercury expands and contracts and the temperature can be read from the scale. Let's have an example. So, we will dip this thermometer and a glass of water. And let us wait for 40 seconds. After 40 seconds, take the thermometer and read the mercury level. In this example, the mercury reading is 25 degrees Celsius, meaning the water temperature is 25 degree Celsius. How to use the infrared thermometer? So the correct usage method is key for ensuring accuracy. So to avoid incorrect measurement, you have to follow this tip. When measuring body temperature, aim at the middle of the forehead above the eyebrows here, okay? And hold the product vertically at a distance of greater than or lesser than one centimeter like this. And when the trigger key is pressed, here the trigger key, okay, the measured value of body temperature will be displayed on the screen. And here is the screen. So let me do it. Okay, so there you can see mine is 36.5 degrees Celsius. Another base unit of metric system is liter. Liter is the base unit of measuring volume of liquid. An instrument used is a graduated cylinder. Let us now discuss how to measure the volume of a liquid. First, let us define what is a liquid. Liquid is a state of matter where the particles are free to flow, has a definite volume but in definite shape. An example, water. Another example, we have an oil. When measuring the volume of a liquid, look for the meniscus. Meniscus is a curved surface of water in the container. And meniscus is formed because of the water that sticks into the side of the container making a U-shape. There are two kinds of meniscus, concave meniscus and convex meniscus. So if a concave meniscus is formed, you measure in the lower meniscus. But if a convex meniscus is formed, you measure in the upper meniscus. And your eye should be at the level of the volume of water of meniscus in order for your measurement to be accurate. Because if your eye is above the level of the meniscus, okay, you will observe a bigger volume of water. If your eye is lower than the water level, you will observe a smaller volume of water. But if your eye is at the level of the water volume or meniscus, you will observe an accurate volume of water. 
This time, let's talk about measuring the volume of regular solid. First, let us define what is solid. Solid is a matter that has a stable definite shape and a definite volume. Example, notebook. Another, glass. Their volume of measurement is calculated depending on whether they are regular or irregular shapes. The volume of a solid with a regular geometric shape like rectangular box, cube, cylinder, sphere can be determined using the volume formula for shape. The volume of a rectangular box like this can be calculated using the formula V is equal to length times width times height, where V is equal to volume, L is equal to length, W is equal to width, and H is equal to height. This is a rectangular box. Let us identify its measurement. First, you have to identify the length, the width, and the height. So this is the length, usually the longer side, and this is the width, and this is the height. So using a ruler, let us identify now its measurement. Okay, first you have to identify the zero marking on the ruler. Okay, and point it at the edge of the box. Okay, from edge to edge, okay, and its measurement is 152 centimeters. So, that's the width. And then for the length, again, you have to point at the zero marking of the ruler. There, from edge to edge, okay, and the measurement is 184 centimeters. Okay, like that, 184 centimeter. And then let us now compute for the height. Again, for the marking of the ruler, you point it at the zero at the edge of the ruler. Okay, from edge to edge. Okay, and it gives us now a measurement of, okay, it gives us now a measurement of 80 centimeter. So, just multiply the length, the width, and the height measurement, and it gives us now a volume of 2,237,440 cubic centimeter. Another regular solid is a cube, and the volume of a cube can be calculated using the formula volume is equal to S times S times S, or volume is equal to S cubed, where V is equal to volume and S is equal to size. Here is an example of a cube where all the sides measure 10 cm. The cube formula is volume is equal to S times S times S or volume is equal to S cube. Substituting S, 10 cm cube, so volume now is equal to 1000 cubic cm. Another regular solid is a cylinder. And here is an example of a cylinder. Okay, and its volume can be calculated using the formula volume is equal to pi r squared times height, where v is equal to volume, r is equal to pi, and pi has a constant value of 3.14, and r is equal to radius. So in this pan, okay, the radius is half of the circle. So if this is the diameter, the half is from the center, okay, up to the edge, okay, is what we call the radius. And then the height, so this is the height from here up to here. Let us compute the volume of the cylinder. So we have now the given R is equal to 5 centimeter, height is equal to 10 centimeter. Using the formula, volume is equal to pi R squared height, Substituting the values, we have now 3.14 for pi. For r, we have 5 cm squared. And then height is 10 cm. So volume now is equal to 785 cubic centimeters. Let us now measure the volume of irregular solid. What are irregular solids? Irregular solids are objects that do not have a normal shape or a fixed geometrical shapes like a piece of broken glass, leaf, or a stone. The volume is measured using a water displacement. Let us measure the volume of this irregular solid, a stone, using the displacement method. So, here is a graduated cylinder filled with water. First is you have to identify the volume of the 
water inside the container. And you look at the meniscus, identify if it is concave or convex. Since the meniscus form here is concave, so we will measure at the lower meniscus. And reading shows 90 ml. So 90 ml now is our V1. Okay, and then we place now the stone slowly inside the graduated cylinder so that water will not spill. Okay, and then take again the measurement. And the measurement now at the lower meniscus, eye level again, is 96 ml. So meaning V2 or volume 2 now is 96 ml. In order to compute for the volume of the stone, we have to subtract volume 2 minus volume 1 and it gives us it gives us now a measurement of 6 ml so 6 ml is the measurement of the water displaced and in the displacement method the water displaced is equal to the volume of the irregular solid placed inside the container hence the volume of our solid stone is also 6 ml. For more videos about measurements and other science process skills, you may visit the links provided below. For more information, you may visit these references. Credits are also given to the following listed on the screen. Have a great day!